Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna put an air conditioner heat pump on top of a, uh, probably about a six year old uh, travel trailer that we own. And it just pooped out on us this summer. So we're gonna walk you through step by step what we've done. You're kinda greedy. You bite my finger. We'll go up here and drop it. Hey, come up here and drop it. I'm not playing no more till you drop it. Good boy. We put this mini uh, split heat pump in by Pioneer about, I don't know, a couple months ago. And we feel pretty confident after doing this job that we can go ahead and replace the air conditioner heat pump on top of our travel trailer. Now our travel trailer just had an air conditioner, uh, but we're upgrading and putting a air conditioner heat pump and it's also quite a bit bigger. The 13,500 BTU air conditioner that we had uh, prior, I don't think it ever was really 13,500 BTU. I just, I think it's never been really right and it petered out this, this spring. So I think it's time to go ahead and replace it. Let's get to it. This is our travel trailer. It's a Coleman. Like I said, I think it's about six years old, maybe. Yeah, it's at least six years old. And uh, it looks, it's kind of faded and, and doesn't look as shiny and new as it once did. However, it's structurally sound, so it's definitely still a good investment to put the air conditioner on. We can always see about polishing it up again. So the first thing you're gonna do is make sure your shore power is disconnected. All right, first thing we're gonna do is remove the plastic cover. Save your hardware, we don't know what comes with the other set. It's right behind you. There's probably screws right there. But they got some kind of little covers on. Let's see if I can get those out. That may well be the hardest part of the whole thing. So these are the four bolts that hold this system in. They're in each corner. And it basically acts as a sandwich and it, as the bolts are tightened up, it pulls it together, compresses the gasket on the top, and that's what waterproofs on the top. And that's, that's pretty much the extent of that. I think we're ready to go ahead and disconnect some wiring. And we're not gonna be using the same wiring because of the fact that um, we just gotta hook the, the shore power up to it Ours is gonna use a remote and we won't need to use the wall thermostat any longer. Take this box down, it'll make it a little easier to get to. Oh, there's one on both sides. <laughs> there's a clamp on both sides. I didn't see that. Oh, let's see if we can take this apart because we're going to need to get the wiring. This is the 110. So what I'm going to do is just clip out some of these, these uh, wire ties that are up in here. They are causing it to be a lot more difficult than it needs to be to work with. So we'll snip these off. Kind of like to snip any of the other wires. I don't think they're going to be re reused, the other wires, but I want to make sure. All right. I'm totally thinking we're not going to need anything, any of these wires, because I think they're all going to go to the other. Go look at the box and make sure you see what you need before you start taking anything loose. That doesn't really matter, it doesn't work anymore. Plastic was holding on there. How much? It may, it may use that frame again. So now what we're doing is we're going to go ahead and untape all this. Take the wire nuts off. 
this is stuff that hadn't seen the light of the day until well, we'll see that 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 thing was loose It's pretty simple, hot neutral ground. All of these wires go up to the top to run the thing. And all the power comes in right here. So this should, I'm hoping, be a lot easier to, a lot easier to put back in. We don't have to worry about all those other wires. The unit we're putting back in is basically self-contained. Because it has a wireless remote. But we will keep this stuff just in case we need it. Screw. Yeah, that goes all the way through, clamps the thing together. Like a sandwich. Mm. Air conditioner sandwich. Put that up. Last bolts out. Let's actually weld it together. Push out. Take you. I thought it would be, I got on work clothes, so I thought it would be a lot dirtier than it. I got stained clothes on. So this camper was built for, I don't know who built it, but it was built for Camper World. Um, and this is where the air conditioner blows in. And on both sides it has ducts where this air conditioner blows in. However, they didn't bother taping the, the ducts off. So the whole time we've had this thing, no wonder it's not been doing well. It's been blowing air up into the cavity of the roof. They taped this side, but they didn't bother to tape the other side. So this is what I'm talking about. This unit right here has been blowing the air conditioner air into the cavity of the roof because these guys didn't uh, take the time to take this off. This is the, that's pretty disappointing. I don't know, yeah, that's, that's definitely disappointing. This tape was up here, but it was really poorly done and just left open. There was really no care done to it. So we're gonna have to go to town, get some aluminum tape, and we're going to run air conditioner tape all around this. Yeah. I've never been really overly impressed with a, how this travel trailer was built, but yeah, and the deeper you get into it, you see all the truths. And a long story how we got it to. <laughs> got his chicken. My last in your hands. Okay. That makes my pucker go up. Mine too. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and take the four screws off 
on the sides. I think there's two on the side and two on the front. Taking yours off will be different depending on each model. It's going to have to be a little bit different. So you really can't can't use this as a 100% reference, but it's definitely general. Look here, the sun has dry rotted this so much that I just barely pushed the pressure on it. Burst. So I cleaned this uh, before and it's never given me any trouble as far as cleaning. So it's not dirty and so that's not what's wrong with it. Could have something to do with half of the air conditioner being blown into the roof attic versus the actual where it's supposed to go. I'm just not impressed with anything about this air conditioner to be honest with you. This was the cheapest air conditioner that they could find I'm sure. I don't see any other mounting screws. I think everything it's just glued down. How about that? So that's what the roof looked like when it was new. That was actually considerably easier than I thought it was going to be. Well, it's not done yet. So. It's not done yet. That's right. So now we're going to just chunk this off the top. Yeah, we're going to do that with our discretionary money that we have each month. She said we should just replace this travel trailer with a new one. I'm going to go out there and just shake the crap out of the money tree and see what happens. <laughs> we're not using that one for sure. I am going to take this one down and uh, in the man basket because it's got Freon in it and it needs to be... I don't know, know how you even dispose of these to be honest with you. Because the simple fact, it still does have some Freon left in it. It's a lot of boxes. It's about a hundred pounds. There wasn't a wind one until I got up here. There's the well, it looks pretty simple. Cutting, I don't say simple, but all right, the first thing we're going to do here is just go ahead and I wipe this down. I'm going to go ahead and put a little cleaner around it. Get one more decent cleaning. I figure the cleaner it is, the more likely it is to seal, keep the rain out. I see some people put a sealer around this. But according to the what I'm reading, there is no, he just put the gasket down and clamp it. Because this uses a rubber, like a rubber coating. Hope it's that easy. Gizmo. Hey. What are you doing in there? Okay, this is the owner's manual. I'm gonna put that through the hole. I think that's the only thing I see. Uh, this is an RV. Air conditioner model A3800, cooling capacity 15,000 BTU, heating capacity 15,000 BTU. Well, that's pretty neat. I thought it was lower. Alright, I want you to go inside and look. I want to put the square rubber gasket around the hole. I need you to help me make sure that I get the gasket lined up. Right? I'm going to go ahead and take black tape and electrical tape and I'm going to 
tape off any excess wires. Now you may want to continue using your uh, gas heat, but for our environment where we're at and how efficient this unit is and also the number of days that we have that are actually freezing are very low. If you do want to keep your heater working, you're going to need to wire this box up in here and just let it like screw it into some some of this metal but we're just going to use ours as a heat pump and an air conditioner because here in the south where we're at it's just not necessary so again i've got these all of the connectors are taped up and now what i'm going to do is just take these excess wires and just fold them up real nice and neat and we're going to take some electrical tape again and just run around them and we're going to tuck them back up into the roof. So this unit has two wires coming out of it. It has a power wire and then it has the uh, wire that goes down to the controller. I wish I had my diagonal side cutters here because I had that coffee. My wife got me this cup. It says, I'm not old, I'm a classic. All right, the next step is we're going to wire this up. We have, this is your 110 or your shore power. You have the black is the hot, the white is the neutral, and the green is the ground. On your wire in the travel trailer, most, most of them are going to use the same wire that they would use in a house. The black is your uh, hot, the white is your neutral, and your uh, ground is bare. So for those experts out there, yes, this might be considered lying. So I always have my sharpshooters out there correcting every little thing that I misspeak. All right, we're going to strip these wires back a little further. I got these new, I think this Kweets. I got older these. I've got some, I got their multimeter. It's been really good. Actually, this works just as advertised. So it's really easy. Huh. I like them. Twist these up. All right, the last one we got is our our neutral. All right, what we're gonna do now is. I'm going to lay these over on their side. I'll put one going this direction and the other two going the other direction. And because this is a travel trailer and it may go down the road some more, we don't we don't move our travel trailer a lot. But I'm going to go ahead and tape this up so that if any bouncing happens, it's going to be pretty secure. And then we'll tuck all this back up into the roof cavity and then we'll tape up the We'll tape up the part that they didn't tape up. I don't tell how much electricity we wasted last year with heat or cooling the attic of the or the camper, camper roof. That's pretty disappointing. And that I was being honest with you. I know you ain't never been a big fan of this travel trailer, but nope. anyway, so we got this pushed up out of the way, all the excess wires. Now we're going to take this one, push it up in out of the way, and we're going to funnel that wire right there. And now we're going to tape all that up. All right, we got some, it's on aluminum tape. Um, 
they, they use this a lot on air conditioners so it's it's got a good sticky tape and it will stay for a long time this is what most people that are installing air conditioners use what we're going to do here is go through and tape up this this duct work where they didn't they just let it blow into the attic space of the travel trailer if you can tell I'm a little bit disgruntled can't believe they would they would be able to do that that was just really baffled me This little bit of extra work will make your air conditioner so much more efficient. What do you think, Isma? He thinks he likes that chicken. That was a big hit in his book. All right, so now we need to put the diverter into the uh, air conditioner. And if you'll see here, it's got a little track that runs around. Well, there's, there, this is pretty easy. You just kind of got to bend, bend it to set in this little track. It's not, that, it's not that difficult, pretty easy to do. However, what you have to do is, depending on your travel trailer, is how thick the ceiling is. Well, our travel trailer, we have to cut across the top here. And it, makes sure, it says make sure cut from this side because this side is shaped to go in this track. So we're gonna end up having to take roughly, uh, uh, yeah, it's about an inch, but it's actually almost one inch exactly. Basically, we need to take, let's see, right there. I want to do it in increments because I can cut more, but I can't take, take I can't add more. Cuts with a pair of just regular house scissors. It's really easy. We made our first cut. And I'm going to mount this foam back in. Let's see, put the wire down through. And let's see how close we got. The thing is, we can always we can cut some more off, but we can't add any to it. I'd have to get up in there with tape. Oh, I think we did really good. I mean, really good. Yeah, there's down pressure all the way across. Very happy with that. All right, can you come hold this? Yeah. Do I have to? Yeah, because I, I, uh, I have, I've forgotten a important part. I forgot the boats. I was so interested in that. Hitting that hole is the hardest thing. I turn the knot or boat to see if it feels like it fell in the hole. So when we tighten these up, we're going to tighten them snug on each one. Just kind of go back and forth. We're going to go over this side, snug this one up, and then we'll we'll tighten them up after we snug them all up. We don't want to tighten one side all the way down because it'll push the gasket out. All right. The next thing we do is we're going to put our our cover up. It, it goes to it's got a on and off for. Basically, you can have the air blow directly down into the, the cabin of the travel trailer, or you can run it through the ductwork. And the first thing you gotta do is plug the little wire up. This looks relatively easy to do. Look at there. I'm definitely gonna have to change it to Fahrenheit. All right, so what we're gonna do now is put the, um, the top up. Either way you want it, and I hold it up. This might be the hardest part of the whole job. That's in. Let's see. Oh, 
Okay, I was a little off. That was totally my fault. <laughs> so right now it's closed. So that it's going through the ductwork. Wow, that blows so much harder than before. And if I move this open, it blows into here. Now let's put the screws in. So what we're going to do is this thermostat is what comes with the travel trailer. And there's a wire behind this. We're going to take the wire out, tape it off, push the wire back into it since we're not using the gas heat. And then we're going to mount this in the place so it looks nicely and professionally done. All right, so what we're gonna do is we, I bent the, the hot wire back out of the way. I'm gonna tape it off. And then I'm gonna bend, bend the, each wire back separately, tape them off separately. So that they can't touch. I'm gonna push that right into the wall. I'm not gonna need it anymore. The next thing I'm gonna do is put the controller right here. What I'm trying to do is hide all the holes. So next thing we do is put in our batteries. It comes with the two batteries and the remote. We'll run through this thing and turn it to uh, from Celsius to Fahrenheit because I have no idea what temperature it actually is. It's set on 24, but unfortunately I, I don't know what that means. I think it's like in the 70s, something like that. I'm not really sure. Is that German? Well, no, it's basically the rest of the world. We're holding, we're holdouts. All right, the control came on. Let's see mode. So it's on Celsius. Let's see settings. When you push the buttons, it lights up so you can see it. It's pretty simple. Push the uh, Celsius or Fahrenheit to switch. Uh, setting up the time, you just push the time set time button. Uh, you set the hours, and you push the the uh, uh, minute button, hour button, switch over to, to minutes, set the minutes. That was probably the most difficult things to do. I didn't even realize that it was the hour minute button there. It's really self-explanatory. If I wasn't trying to do a video, it would be very, very easy to do. So right now the air conditioner, I've got it set on, you have only the fan modes, you have different modes. Right now I have it set on auto. Uh, it's super quiet right now. Just unbelievably different. The other one was really loud. The other one was very loud comparably. Uh, the compressor was horribly loud. And this one, the compressor is on and it does right now it's on auto and it just automatically picked up a little bit because I turned it to 72. Now swing around here and let me show you the controls up here. Let me turn some of these lights off so it doesn't blind you. How's that? Right here is the little light. Now you can use this, it's got a button that says display. You push the display and it turns it off. It's still on, but the display's off. Or at night, you can leave this on and it's a little night light. Um, just pretty neat. Overall, I mean, it puts out really good air. It's cold. Yeah, I like it. We've turned this thing on 70 degrees. It's blowing through the ducts really good it's it's cool and all the duct are blowing out everywhere really well now because they uh, before they did the deal where they didn't put the duct in right so now the ducts are blowing really well it's super quiet it's it's unbelievable we can have a conversation right now and yeah we can have a really good conversation right now and not be distracted before you literally could not watch tv in here if the air conditioner was on so if you went somewhere and you wanted to chill out, say it was raining outside and you wanted to watch TV, 
you would have to uh, have, make a choice either watch TV or have the air conditioner on. It wouldn't, you, you couldn't do both. So there we go. We have the Rec Pro air conditioner installed on our travel trailer. It's 15,000 BTU, both heat and air. Um, it's super quiet to this point. I cannot brag on it enough. We can have a conversation in here. Before, we could not actually make this video with the old air conditioner because it would have been too loud. Hey, if you have any questions about this system or if you think I missed something, help the community out. Put a post a comment in the comment section below and tell us what you think. Uh, I'm no pro at this first one I've actually ever done. Listen, God bless. Have a great day.